It's great to be with you on 7 at 7 today. I'm Walter Hallam, and I am thrilled that you've taken time to be with me today. Uh, go ahead and get you a cup of coffee or maybe a little glass of iced tea or whatever you do in the morning and in the evening just to refresh yourself. And let's learn from the Word of God, and let's learn from lessons that we learn in life also how to be connected correctly in our own personal lives. I call it connection to success, connection to joy, connections to life, and connections to the will of God. Tell me if this works for you today also. Thank you for taking time uh, to be with me, sharing this with a friend, and letting someone know that today something good is going to happen to you. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe in the power of divine expectation. You know, Hebrews 11:1 1 says that faith is the substance of things expected from God. In the King James Bible, it calls it hope. And hope means expectation or expecting from God. So faith is the substance of what you hope for or what you are expecting from God. I expect something good to happen. Even on days when it doesn't seem to be good, something good always comes out of that day. Let me talk to you today about being connected in a powerful, powerful way. You know, uh, President John Kennedy years ago talked about a French general that he admired and a story that that general would tell about wanting to plant a tree in his garden, in his yard. And so he had a gardener and he told him, I want to plant this particular type of tree in uh, this backyard and I want it to grow and do good. And that gardener said, well, I wouldn't really recommend that to you because that's a very slow growing tree and it takes it a long time to grow. And so that general said, well, if that's the case, we better get started planting it this afternoon then. I thought, what a way to uh, speak. If you get connected now, it may take a little time but you're going to grow into what God has for your life if you're rightly connected. And we've talked about in this particular series, being connected in the way we pray, in our obedience to God, uh, connected in uh, taking care of our bodies and of our mind, of our health and our strength and our diet. And I'm not meddling or accusing or anything of that nature. I just want to make you aware that sometimes the things that we take for granted can actually, and are very vital, can become disconnected or loosely connected in our life, but they must be maintained to get the maximum good effect. Or, like in an internet connection, if you want to get a good positive flow continually coming there, check the connections and keep your uh, whole wiring system well connected. How much more in life should you uh, guard the relationships that are so vital with your spouse, with your children, with your friends, in your church. It's very necessary uh, to maintain those connections because they can get loose. And when you do, ultimately, uh, you will have a disconnection. It's very important to be a person of honor. Honor is uh, something that you really give to yourself. It is an honor that you show to someone else. And it's something you do because of who you are, not necessarily because of who they are. My experience is when you walk in honor toward one another, that you attract people. Whatever you fail to honor in life, you repel. And they almost always move away from you. What you honor is attracted to you. So honor one another. Honor your wife. Honor your husband. Honor your children. Speak positive words to them. Words of reinforcement, not words of condemnation. Keep the connection clean. Keep it uh, well fitted, well shaped uh, in a way uh, that your words and your actions actually attract to you. And then you'll see in your own life how good it makes you feel because you're connected correctly to honor. Honor is a big thing. More than once in the Bible, the Scripture says that God promoted people or even protected them because of their integrity. Integrity is a very high watermark in the life of every person. And once again, no one's perfect, but you should develop, every man and woman should develop the integrity 
that God uh, has given you to walk in. God will promote you through integrity, telling the truth, having your motives correct uh, in everything that you know and everything you put your hand to. You can be misjudged, but you have to know yourself that your motive is correct and try to demonstrate that at all times. In the Bible, there was a king one time. It's in the book of Genesis. And he saw Abraham and he saw his wife, Sarah, but he did not know that Sarah was his wife. And so because he was a king, he decided that he wanted her to be a part of his harem. You know the story in the Bible. And he took her from Abraham. Uh, Abraham really didn't defend her in that because he was afraid for his own life. And then God appeared to uh, that king in a dream and spoke to him and said, that's that man's wife, leave her alone or judgment will come to you. Well, the next day the king said to Abraham, why didn't you tell me that was your wife? Uh, and then he said, out of the integrity of my heart, I did not know that was your wife. And he prayed that God would not judge him for uh, stealing that man's wife. Isn't that an interesting thought? God protected him because of his integrity. In the book of Psalms, God promoted uh, David because of his integrity, the Bible says. So I encourage you today, stay connected. In a world that oftentimes has a lack of integrity, you and I as believers in Jesus Christ and followers of the head of the church, Jesus, we should walk in integrity toward one another, walk in love, walk in honesty, have joyful humor, and make a decision that you'll walk in integrity in all the areas of your life. I hope this helps you today. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, let us stay connected to your principles, to your word, so we can be a doer of the word of God and have integrity toward God, toward man, and honor in our own lives in all we do. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope this helped you today. Share it with a friend. I cannot wait to see you on the next 7 at 7. I'm Walter Hallam. I believe something good will happen to you today.